Good morning. Can you tell where I am? Well, my car's muddy. That's a sign. I actually got it all muddy in western Colorado, but I'm now here in Utah at Arches National Park. Behind me is Balanced Rock. We're gonna hike around that real quickly and then just move on and do some other hikes. I plan to spend two days here, but tomorrow it's supposed to rain in the morning, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, yeah, I was home for a while and then I just drove like crazy to get here. It was a winter storm um, right next to Denver, so I missed that because that happened last night. So I drove through that yesterday afternoon, but I'll tell you all about that another time. But for now, let's check out Balance Rock from other angles. That is really crazy. That's the biggest Balance Rock I've ever seen. Ever. It's so big. The information board didn't have stats like how tall it is, but I think it's gotta be, I don't know, 40 feet tall? Just the rock itself, maybe. This is my first time at Arches National Park, and I gotta say, the drive is, I mean, if you have a bunch of kids in their car just driving through, it's probably a, an awesome game to see who spots the most arches. There's just arches all over, and some are kind of like, are they arches or not? But just to the northeast of here, there's a, I think, tower arch and something else arch, but you could see them from far off on the road. And they're massive. I can't wait to get to them. But this is just a unique feature of the park. It's not an arch, but it's very unique. <laughs> it feels like it's one of those things where you got to come see it because any day it's just going to fall over because it's really leaning. Everything's tiny here, but snow-capped mountains in the distance and there's a big arch over there and just towers everywhere. It's crazy being back on back out in the west. It's, it's such a different world from Florida and the Midwest. I mean Next up is the Windows Trail. It's a mile round trip. And there's a sign, and there, there's at least one of them right there. There's a north and south, so we'll go check them out. Try to get underneath them as well. With its turret arch, it's beautiful with the two windows. The one on the left is so thick. It's amazing. South window on the left, north window on the right. We're gonna head right and hit the north window. Two gigantic arches right next to each other. Almost from the same rock. It's crazy. And <laughs> there's crazy rock formations just all over the place.
There's the south window and the north window from the back side lit up. It's amazing. I'm just standing here on this trail. And I see at least three arches, maybe four, maybe five. It's hard to tell. There's so many arches here. It's just mind boggling. And there's other arches that we walk by. In case you didn't know, a, the difference between a bridge and an arch, a bridge is caused by water. So it's usually near water sources. Whereas arches are caused by anything. Wind, rain erosion, I guess. It doesn't As long as it's not like a stream. But I think some are formed just from like, I don't know. I don't know if it counts when a rock leans on another rock at all or is resting on another rock. I'll have to ask or Google it. It's just so many arches here. It's like, they don't even exist, you know, out east. You don't even think about them. I mean, they exist, but out here, I don't know what's going on. It's just, it's like magic. It's one of those national parks where you're glad it's a national park and it rightfully should be, you know. Next up is Double Arch, but if you look, Double Arch is right there, but then there's another arch over there, another arch. It's just arch craziness, and some look like arches, but I think that's an arch. It goes through. I don't know if it counts if you have to make the UE. Interesting, this is a pothole arch. These pits formed on the top and eroded through, and then eventually went out both sides and created a double arch with a nice sunroof in the middle. Pretty nice. That's an example of water creating an arch, except it's not a stream, so it's still an arch. Pretty cool. Beautiful day. Does that count as an arch? And the top part of the arch, there's a gap. If it's big enough, it'd be an arch. I'm not sure how big it is, though. I'm sure someone went up there and measured it. I'm underneath the arch and check out this band. It's like, it's just a band of rock curved. And it just curves over the side. It's really amazing to how there's a gap on the top and below and it's just literally a band of rock. Heading towards Skyline Arch now. And I guess there's a couple other arches to the right, but we'll look for them. I don't know if we can see them. Yeah. Nobody's getting up in this one. I guess in 1942, a big chunk fell out of there. It doubled the opening size, but the rocks, I guess, smashed right down here. Let's go take a look at it. So the rock was on the left side. It fell down. And it's a whole bunch of big chunks. 80 years ago, slowly wearing down to sand. That's a lot of rock. Now we're at Devil's Garden Trailhead. It's very popular the parking lot there's a lot of parking spots but they're all full I, i'm lucky i got one pretty close i guess it was too small i don't know a couple of people drove past it which is odd but this is a seven and a half mile sort of loop a lot of like little trunks you got to do to go see all the arches but i figure it's seven and a half miles it's gonna take me five hours at uh yeah that's about right mile and a half an hour with all the stops and everything it's gonna take a while One gallon per person, no way. Yeah, 
Yeah. At the base of this arch, look at the texture on these rocks. Just sheets. Little by little, they kind of flaked away to make the entry here. A lot of people on this show are trying to get to Landscape Arch, which is over there. I believe it's the widest arch somewhere. Widest arch somewhere, either in the US or in the world, but the thinnest for sure. Landscape Arch gets all the attention because it's unique, all right. But there's two more arches just to the right. So in 1991, a huge 180-ton slab of rock fell off the corner there, and now nobody's allowed to go under there. A line forms up right there because uh, it's actually two lanes, but <laughs> people are being careful. This is Partition Arch. There's two of them right here. Big ones. Windy right here. Here's the approach to Navajo Arch. On Google Maps, it says this one is Pigeon or Bad Guano Arch, and then the other one is Navajo Arch, so it's a little wrong. I guess not Google Maps, Gaia. Look at that. Where's it going? Wow. Pretty nice how these arches form in between these long segments of rock and you can kind of get between the other side without having to go over. That's a nice arch.
There are the double O arches. You can actually see both of them, top and bottom. Pretty cool. From back here. quite odd for some reason I'm not seeing anybody coming like this way on the trail it's like everyone went to that private arch and then went back the way they came there's nobody coming this way it's really weird I hear voices I don't see anyone but I came down this way it's really like steep um, but that's what Gaia and all trail says there's no markers anywhere so I think I walked this way um, wish me luck otherwise I'm coming back and going back up that way there's nobody around me. It's really weird. I think I've only got like 1.3 miles to go or so. I'm kind of beat though. It's a seven and a half mile hike with including all the little diversions. And earlier I did a little over three. It's not a lot altogether really for one day, but it's a lot for me and that's just up and down. I think I'm still getting used to the up and downs. Florida's weak in me. I should tell you a story. On the way here, just west of Denver on Route 70, I knew it was gonna get high, but I didn't know it was gonna get that high, but it gets over 11,300 feet. And when I was driving by 9,000 feet, I started getting a headache. And then by 10,000, I started getting dizzy and it was snowing and it was dark. <laughs> Bad combination. I had to do like deep abdominal heavy breathing just to keep the dizziness away. And every time I just kind of stopped, it would just come back. It was it's not the best time, especially there's a tunnel there, kind of dark. And the headlights got ice over it, so they, they didn't shine much light. And it was just kind of dark. Rough time, rough time getting here, but... Beautiful day now. I'm in Utah. I'm in Arches for the first time. And I'm going to be back here tomorrow and do some more hikes, check out some more Arches. I think after this hike, I'm just going to go to Moab, maybe do some grocery shopping. I, I need some kind of snack food and uh, just go try to find, find a campsite for tonight and just call it and uh, eat and hydrate. I think that's a big thing right now. Yeah, when I went over that pass in Colorado, it was after a day and a half of like 10 hour plus days of driving. So I was dehydrated and that was, that was a bad combination. That was a tough one. I remember I did drive that before I went to Boulder. Um, I had to get a physical for a job I was trying to get, but um, I did do that, but that was after like hiking in the Sierras and hiking up Mount Whitney and everything. So I didn't feel a single thing. So I totally disregarded it, but that was a doozy. 11,300 feet really got me. I didn't think there were deer here. That was just bighorn sheep poop that I saw. But there are two pretty big deer here. No antlers. I don't know what they are. Could be whitetail. Who knows? That one's going down the trail. And there's one to the left. He's far away at sea, though. He took a look at me, but then uh, I guess he didn't care. I would say that is the best well-hidden trail counter I've ever seen. It's like right behind one of these things where it's a stand trail. So nobody looks over there probably, right? <laughs> and then it counts and it's like designed to be fit there perfectly. So I triggered it four times, All right? Nobody looks at that sign. Heading back to the car, there's this. It's like a runaway truck ramp. I guess if you're walking and you can't stop, just run up the hill. Or if the kids still have energy, make them run up the hill.